everyone, and welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, alongside current Alabama enrollee. Uh, let's see, he wrote a book. Uh, you know him from Rundown. He's on every wrestling network. He's on every sports network. He does a lot of things. That is Brad, the Boat Gilmore. And Boat, we don't bring in for a match unless it's a real primetime event. That actually happens to be one of the competitors' nicknames. It is Final Exam taking on Lightning Time. What storylines stand out to you in this team's matchup? I mean, look, these are the top two ranked teams that we have right now in the MTS. And when you look at these four players as individuals, they could be ranked one through four as far as I'm concerned. That is how good they are when it comes to playing this game that we call the movie trivia showdown. I think that you obviously have to highlight. I'm big, and you know this, when you're in sports, you run off momentum. Light, uh, Lightning Times coming off a momentous victory over the team of Danger Zone in Ben Bateman and Dan Merle. Ethan Irwin then coupled that with another win over Dan Merle. He's your new singles champion at the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Incredible contest between the two of those guys. Momentum, is it on the side of Lightning Time or can the other team, can Lon Harris, can Paulo Yama continue their dominance in teams? I'm excited to see. They certainly hope so, because like you said, we might as well be looking at a semblance of a Mount Rushmore of movie trivia showdown history, but it's live today in front of your naked steaming eyeballs watching these two compete in a number one contender match. The winning team is going to be facing Shazam for those shiny team belts that Shazam currently sports. And like you said, we are possibly going to see a belt in somebody's shot today because Ethan Irwin, the current singles belt holder. So there's a whole lot of championship medal, a whole lot of greatness going Going on, and I don't just say that about my announcing partner. I say this about how we got here and this incredible promo package. See, the thing is, I probably, I honestly should have thought more about the secretary. She's so cute when she says, "You are right." He's a righteous dude, you know. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm glad you knew that, though. I, I, it's certainly the moment that I did not know. So. Yeah, you see, we, we figured it out. That's what matters. So, I mean, yeah. Good. Hello. Hi, everybody. Both Ethan and Liz are two competitors that, like they said in the beginning, answer questions right, because that's what they're doing here, is answering trivia questions. A number one contender match. Boy, it really feels like the suspects are having a lot of these, and how are we doing in our number one contender matches? Oh, that's right, we're winning. We're winning them all. Here we are again. Yeah, we needed to cool off after that last match, because it was a lot. We're a barn burner. Back and forth the whole time, talking things through. Both teams played a great game. It just came down to that five-point question. Hey, once again, hat don't lie. Here we are. Hat don't lie. Uh -uh. Hat don't lie. Ours. They're going to be in their absolute top form, fiercest level of play selves. Who can stay in this crazy world of ours? All we can do is show up and answer movie trivia questions. And that we shall. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Let's see if one more time we can say that, uh, you know, Cat don't lie. Cat don't lie. Brad, it's, it's like watching a miniature history of the very movie trivia showdown itself. And when you have swag and when you have the usual suspects as the two factions competing today, you know you're going to get you know, some barbs back and forth, but a whole lot of laughs. Oh, absolutely. And here's the thing that I absolutely love about both of these team captains. First off, when you look at swag, I think that, uh, you know, Winston Marshall knows a little bit about one of the players over there for the usual suspects talking about Liz Shannon Miller under his expert tutelage last season. What can, what insights can he provide? Uh, final exam. We'll have to see that. And then Sam Levine always has the finger ready to pull the trigger on the challenge flag, which, you know what, I think is a great thing, especially for maybe not the editors, maybe not everybody. I like that he's ready to do it, though. I like that he's ready to do it at any given Sunday. I think that that's also makes him dangerous and it makes the usual suspects dangerous when you have a guy like Sam Levine, who's a former singles champion and former teams champion in your corner. That goes a long way. 
And at least you and I don't have to worry about Juan the Delinquent Harris showing up. Because by this point, sure. even though he may not be making the best life decisions, we know he shows up on time and he does know a lot about movies, complimenting his partner, Prime Time Paulo Yama's ability very, very well. But are they going to be able to have the chemistry that is always on display between Lightning Liz Shannon Miller and Ethan Big Time Irwin? We're about to find out the question to that and so many more answers with Brad and I asking most of the questions in just a little bit. Brad, I'm excited. I know you are too. You ready to get going? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first. Representing the usual suspects with a record of three wins and one defeat. They are the number two ranked team in the movie trivia showdown. The MTS singles champion, Ethan Big Time Irwin, Lightning, Liz Shannon Miller. This is Lightning Time. And there is Lightning Time. And we get to see a very unique situation here in the virtual format. We have two friends and colleagues that are actually working together currently in the shot. They're as separate as you would be in a studio match, so there's no worry of shenanigans. But we do get to see that beautiful, shiny belt there in the background. Ethan Irwin, you're coming off a massive singles championship, and so now you get to partner back up with Lightning Liz Shannon Miller. You must just be walking on cloud nine. I mean, do you feel more confident than you ever have in a schmodown going into this match? I mean, look, you never know, but yeah, pretty good. <laughs> and you know Liz talking about momentum is what we were talking about coming off y'all's last match y'all played great came down to the five y'all nailed your five pointer that's what brings us here today uh how much do you think momentum will actually have a factor today I mean I know that I was at Ethan's uh I was at the taping for Ethan's match and the energy there was incredible and I feel like if we can just coast on that uh for as long as possible I feel like we'll do pretty good it was great to see you and Ethan at that event. And so, Liz, I'll, I'll finish the questioning with you here real quick. Is that do you do you let your mind wander to what might it, it feel like if you and Ethan are able to get past this match today, then take on Shazam and hoist those teams championship belts? Ethan would be double belted. You would have a championship in teams. Do you let your mind dream yet or do you just focus on the match at hand? Oh, just very much the match at hand. I mean, at the very least, like, I know that if we go on to play Shazam, I'm a huge fan of both of those players, and it would be a pleasure to play them. So uh, that's kind of, that's that's as much as I'm thinking about the future, is it would be a pleasure to play them. It would be tough to get all those belts in one shot, but I think we can do it. In the meantime, it's Brad... Porch. <laughs> it does look like a very nice, but I feel like Oprah should be doing an interview with them afterwards, but I think Jen Sturger is <laughs> going to do just great. Brad, they're not playing Shazam yet because in their way are their opponents and their opponents representing swag with a record of six wins three defeats with three knockouts they are the number one ranked team in the movie trivia showdown primetime Paul Oyama the delinquent Lon Harris this is final exam there is final exam primetime Paul Oyama always ready Lon Harris always confused let's start with you primetime because you've had a hell of a season you've made a lot of people who maybe were on the fence about you your personality your ability you've won them over you're clearly one of the best to ever play this game so what would getting a win here today alongside the delinquent partner of yours mean for you and for your team I mean, that's that's everything, right? That that's kind of what we were here for, is to win. Um, I'm getting kind of sick of this Ethan guy. It's like the third time in the last month or so. Um, but I kind of I really want to get a win against him. You know, I I was close in the first match, not as much in the second. But um, I'm really motivated, I think, to um, to get the win here today for me, for my partner, for my for my manager, for my faction. Yeah, and Lon, to go to over to you. This is a number one contender match. Obviously, if you win this. Yeah, I don't mean to break news for you, but yeah, that's news how to me. Big... First time hearing about it. Well, this is a big deal then, just to let you know. <laughs> if you win this match, you will have a shot at the championships, at the team's championships. What would that mean to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, that would mean I got to come back and do more of this, which, 
you know, kind of a bummer. I'll have to check my sketch, but you know, I'm always happy to come back, support the team. Uh, you know, I, I thought squatting in, in someone's garden was kind of my move, but I guess other people are, are embracing that now. And, uh, you know, it's just moving forward. Yeah, I, the big difference there is that they're aware that they're in their garden and the owners of the garden you squat in, maybe not so much. Uh, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, well, that's, you can't tell the people. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> we're, we're ready to go. Let's fire it up. Um, last question, Juan, you could see yourself at the end of this run with a championship belt if you win today and then you and your Ooh. partner defeat Shazam. What How do many you belts do you currently value? own? What, what's, what's, what's the street value on one of those, do you think? I, see, this is why, Brad, I, I think we just bring everybody in. Yeah. Like, are we talking like a couple hundy? You thinking maybe, you know, I mean, five stacks? Like, what am I What am I pulling in for one of these? Come on, just come on over and let's take this. Have you had it appraised? Have you taken it downtown? I got a buddy who could. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm not at liberty to say the value of the Schmodown belts, but the sentimental nostalgic value might be a little more than the actual price tag. <laughs> yeah, I and think now, so. for the rules of round number one. Round number one in teams is an individual exercise of movie trivia Schmodown know-how. Eight questions are asked to the field of competition. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one, nor is there any collusion with your teammate. Yeah, no you may not rely on your teammate's knowledge to get a correct answer in round number one. That's why you all have a writing surface and a writing utensil. You simply write down your best attempt at an answer. You have 15 seconds to do so. Once Brad or myself ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. I keep it up there for a hot second. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into your speaking of volume device. Remind each team, you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want us to repeat the question, use the JTE rule. You also each as a team have one challenge that may be utilized at any point throughout the three round match. We'll bring in managers and it'll look like the Brady Bunch and we will all confirm whether the challenge is taking place at the request of your manager, ultimately. All right, so we will start with Lightning with Shannon Miller. You ready to get going? Clever catchphrase here. And the gentleman just over to your right, Ethan Irwin. Always be closing. Down. Always be closing, and in your case, always be yelling for the duration of the match. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, Juan Harris, a delinquent. Are you at least as prepared as you usually are? I mean, whatever, man. Let's do it. Primetime Paul Oyama, I have a feeling you're ready to go. Say your clocks. Let's do this. Brad? Then let's get ready to Schmodown! Beautiful. From Brad Gilmore. Brad Gilmore will be asking the very first question of the match. Brad, it's worth a point. What category are you looking at? All right, your first question in the category of comic book movies. Thomas Jane plays Frank Castle, a man whose family is murdered after a hit put out by mobstered Howard Saint in this 2004 comic book adaptation. So, okay, Brad, are you currently taking classes at Alabama? Yes, no. I mean, I don't know when this airs. <laughs> four, did you not do your homework? Three. I thought you were two, gonna do it for me. One, pens I down, it in my head really copy. Let's yeah, do you. Lightning with Shannon Miller first. Did you have it? I did, it's the Punisher. And that sorry, is correct. How about the delinquent? Yeah. The Punisher. And Ethan, big time. Uh, the Punisher. And primetime Paul Oyama. I heard he prefers the Punisher. Uh, the Punisher. <laughs> it is a lot of punitive <laughs> measures that <laughs> Thomas Jane takes. That is correct. And thank you to Liz and Ethan for appeasing us with holding your boards up. We appreciate that. Your next question. Since you all four ace that one, let's move to dramas and the query for a point. Which Academy Award winning actress appears in the films The Wrestler, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, and The Lincoln Lawyer? You've seen The Wrestler, right, Mark? I have, and I know that's a movie near and dear to your heart and career. It's great. It is great. Highly depressing if you work in wrestling. <laughs> Five, four, or out of wrestling. Three, Just two. in general depressing. That's, I saw a repeat from Ethan. Repeat. Yeah. All right, then that is going to be charged to a lightning time. It is in the category of dramas. Your question, which Academy Award winning actress appears in the films The Wrestler, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, and The Lincoln Lawyer? Yeah, it's a pretty uh, 
pretty weighty movie. I will say, although it might be depressing for people in the wrestling profession, it's very inspiring for people who slice meat at delis. You know what? Silver lining. Four, three, that's what I'm here for. Two, one. Pens down. Let's go to the delinquent first. I have Marissa Tomei. She was great in Seinfeld. That is correct for a point. Did Ethan get it? I also said Marissa Tomei. Then you're also right. How about primetime? Very intense opening two minutes to, before the devil knows you're dead. Uh, Marissa Tomei. <laughs> and Lightning Liz. Marissa Tomei. Oh, all these sweet children of mine all got it correct, Brad. So we go back to you. Good repeat. All right. Your third question is in the category of animated movies. They are drawn by hand or a computer. You say Which that. 2000 animated Disney film featuring John Goodman was nominated for best song at the Oscars for My Funny Friend and Me by Sting and David Hartley. All right. I have a super hot take for you. Are you ready? Oh, I don't know. Am I? I can't think of David Hartley's music, but I'd rather listen to him sing than Sting. I'm not mad at that. Five, four, three. You mean two, the wrestler Sting, right? One. I, either one. I just can't do Roxanne. Ethan, you're up first. I said Monsters, Inc. That is incorrect. First miss of the ball game. Primetime. Did you have it? Pull the lever, Kronk. The Emperor's New Groove. The Emperor's New Groove is it. Did Liz have it? Uh, yes, The Emperor's New Groove. She got it. How about the delinquent? No, I did the Monsters, Inc. Uh, route yeah, instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well... We have fans of Monsters, Inc. here, but it is only Liz and Paul who still have the shot at a perfect game, or at least perfect round one, and a perfect game for that matter. So we move to your next category. That is the 1990s. And the question. Of it. What 1999 romantic comedy has the tagline, can the most famous film star in the world fall for the man on the street? Brad, you know something about that? Um... I am a man on the street quite frequently in another career, nevertheless. We, we don't need to get into that today. Fine. All work is noble. Four. Alabama tuition time. Repeat the question. Okay. That's uh, first one for final exam. It's in the category of the 1990s. The question, what 1999 romantic comedy has the tagline, can the most famous film star in the world fall for the man on the street? Each team with two JTE rules remaining. So all right. down. They're all locked and loaded. Paul getting his answer in. Five, four, three, two, one. Used to repeat. Don't look confident. Let's go to you, primetime. No, this is wrong. Never been kissed. That is incorrect, Liz. Uh, that'd be Notting Hill. She is the only competitor remaining perfect. How about Lon Harris? Notting Hill. Right. He is correct. Ethan? I almost said America's Sweethearts, but I did say. Yes, you did, and that is correct. And so it is currently 7-6, to six, a lightning time still in front of final exam by a point. All right, in your fifth question in round number one in the category of biopics, Jessica Chastain, Idris Elba, and Kevin Costner star in which biographical drama from writer-director Aaron Sorkin? so fun to see competitors of this caliber hang on every word in the question we ask and sometimes you see the light bulb come on in real time <laughs> four three two one pens down and we're going back to you first lightning with shannon miller whose game molly's game she is a sweet dog and also runs a mean poker contest <laughs> Juan harris yeah i also had molly's game is correct ethan Irwin. Okay, yeah, Molly's game. game. Works, How about better. prime time? Molly's game. Everybody got that one, so let's move on to the category of comedies. <laughs> Boo. Getting a lot of laughs at that outdoor show. Your question for a point. Raul Julia, Christopher Lloyd, Carol Kane, and Angelica Houston star in what 1990s Barry Sonnenfeld? film brad how many years did you spend in the 1990s on planet earth i mean a solid eight five four three two 
One. You look good for your age. Pens down. Let's go to... Six more than Paul Oyama. Juan Harris. I have the Adams Family. The Adams Family is incorrect. Ooh. Does Ethan have it? Adam's family values. It was a trick question. Felt a little bad asking it. Just kidding. How about Paul? The Adam's family values. Adam's family values. We can <laughs> also fair, accept. Fair and let's yeah. go to Lightning Liz. I, I fell for the trick. I put the Adam's family. Okay. Well, we got two Good out trick. of the four of them. That was very Good tricky. Trick, and so the DJ. score doesn't go up quite as much as we're used to seeing in this contest already, Brad. But it is still 10 to 9 in favor of Lightning Time. All right, your seventh question in round number one is in the category of rom-coms. Who stars as Nick Twisp and also plays his alter ego, Francois Dillinger, in the comedy Youth in Revolt? Um, you sounded very confident asking that. I'll tell you this. I've never heard of anything that you said in that question. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I be honest? I impressed myself. I'm going be honest with you. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Ethan was scribbling furiously. Did he have it? Uh, if I do, if it is Michael Sarah. Then you do. Prime time. Did you have it? Michael Sarah. He also had it. Lightning Liz. Michael Sarah. I've never been able to forget that mustache. <laughs> and Lon Harris. Michael Sarah. Well, as usual. The field of competition, much smarter than Brad and myself. So <laughs> we go to your final question in round number one. And this would have been for a perfect match for Lightning Liz, but she did miss that Adam's Family question. So nobody... Please, please do bring that up as much as possible. <laughs> it was good for me to remember that I verbalized it in the microphone. It wasn't particularly to beat you up. Your final question is in the category of famous actors and actresses. People of note with much larger bank accounts than the guy talking. For a point, which actor appears in the films Halloween H2O, Angels in the Outfield, and Sin City, A Dame to Kill For? Out of those, still... out of those ahead, three, Brad. which one are you popping in? Which one are you, which one are you watching tonight <laughs> on Netflix? I had never seen Halloween H2O until I had to watch it for a Rotten Tomatoes thing. I really liked it. Okay. Can you uh, repeat? For, yes, that is the second one for final exam. Category is famous actors and actresses. The question, which actor appears in the films Halloween H2O, Angels in the Outfield, and Sin City, A Dame to Kill For? And I'm going to tennis that question right back to you, Mr. Gilmore. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised you didn't go Angels in the Outfield. I'm a big sports movie guy, but... I know. Um, I, th I thought you were going to be an angel. Four, three. I was too depressed from the wrestler to watch any more sports movies. <laughs> One, pens down, and Paul Oyama. Only thing, a few things matter to him: his car, his ride, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He nailed it. How about Liz? What a cutie, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He certainly was adorable. And third rock from the sun, Juan Harris. I did. I put Thomas E. and Nicholas. I couldn't pull the name. I knew it, it was a three-letter name. I couldn't think of it. You got so close. How about Ethan? Have it. Ethan does not have it as well. Oh. Okay. And so it is 12 Ooh. to 11. Yeah. Brad, a lot of interesting things bubbling up in round number one. It seems like if one team missed, the other one did as well. And so it is still just a one point lead for lightning time over final exam. So that is the end of round number one. And thanks to the very honest competitors, it's the same margin regardless. But Brad and I might have been a point off with our scoring. It is officially 13 to 12 as we head into round number two. Same margin, it is still going to be lightning time with a one point lead over final exam. And now we get to the rules of round number two. First rule of round number two, uh, Brad and I, especially me, do a better job of keeping score. Now that we're done with that, it's the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each competitor gets to spin at the virtual wheel. Once the team settles on a category, six questions will emerge. You can confer on this one. Each and every question is a matter of fact. Questions worth two points. If the team isn't sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which we're told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question does recede to one. Keep in mind, competitors, stealing is available 
in round number two. It's a virtual format here in teams. And so whichever team is currently fielding their set of questions, the opposite team will be placed in an entirely different stream where we're monitoring their actions to make sure they're not seeing or hearing any of the questions asked. If there are any steal opportunities, that team in the other stream will be presented to them once they return after the initial line of questioning. So with all of that out of the way, it is a lead for lightning time by a point. Lightning time, you have the option. Do you want to spin or defer? We would like to defer to our opponents. Man, I can't wait to squat in that garden. Ooh, it's <laughs> comfy, shade, it looks cozy. Lon, I'm gonna help you break into it because I won't lie. I, you know how I feel about Liz, and then we got in here, and I was told that she loves Sam more than me. I, yeah. I was in the pregame, and that's all I have focused on. I don't care you're losing by a point. It's that's not all a big I was deal. focused you're on too. Back. Oh, well, I forgot to uh, go and love it. My heart, you give your heart to somebody and then they just take it and dash it amongst the rocks. My Jesus! Okay, um, y'all are doing great. Thanks. Do what you do. We're, we're down to one JTE. That puts us in a little bit of a bind, but it's okay. You did it in order to keep pace and that's what's important. I know that both of them led to us staying in there and keeping it within a one point range. So let's just I go know, I, I blew it on the Halloween one. <laughs> I just I had I had LL Cool J down there. I'm like, it's not, it's not. <laughs> no, but it's it gave not. Paul. I don't know if you noticed. Paul took a minute to go. Oh crap! Right. Oh crap! So all right, cool. let's just go spin and then we'll talk cool. some more. It's fine. Cool. All right, they're right. spinning it with, spinning their, with their, minds. their minds. You know, it's funny with punctuation. It has landed okay. on Oscars. Oscars. Oh, sorry, right. I skipped. Um, I know we talked about this. I'm thinking we spin again. I one think more? so. Yeah, I would. Sure. I would agree with that. I would agree with All that. All right. Yeah. All right. I, mean, I know this is kind of one we're on the fence about. I think we should spin again. Yeah. But I'm saying, isn't right. it funny with punctuation? If you just add an apostrophe s, it goes from Emily Blunt to Emily's Blunt. You know, it's kind of crazy. Ooh. Hey, hey, look, what hey. look what happens. Dinner's choice. It is 60 seconds to decide the category you'd like to field questions from, gentlemen. Winston, can I do it? Can we Go do it? For it man. Uh, for I it, believe man. we will be taking a Kira Kurosawa. Please. Love it. Love it. Love that choice. Strong Kurt choice. Sawa. It is. Gambare! Gambare! We are good and back. And uh, apparently final exam feels pretty good, too. They spun Spinner's Choice, Brad. And so they chose to field questions. Totaling six in the world of Akira Kurosawa movies, the legend. Brad will be asking you, gentlemen, your series of questions. Brad, whenever you are ready and whenever the gentlemen feel confident for two points. All right, gentlemen, your first question. Which classic Kurosawa film was remade as the Western, The Magnificent Seven? It's it's the seven, seven Samurai, Samurai Paul. Yeah. Seven Samurai, final answer. That is correct for two points. Two points, and we move to your second question in round number two. What epic... 1985 Kurosawa film was a loose remake of the Shakespeare play King Lear. It's Ron. It's the best. Yeah, Ran. Yeah, Ron, Ran, R A N, uh, Ran, final <laughs> answer. Give them another two points, Mark. They got it again. Correct. They did. They are cooking. All right. Halfway through. Perfect thus far. Not even opting for their multiple choice. As we One get more, and then we're halfway. <laughs> not quite. Well, that is right. That yeah, is yeah, right. Yeah. Thank You're you. Good. Thank you. Again, you know what, Mark? They're correcting us today, and I appreciate them well, for that. Why do stop throwing their book smarts in our face? I know. All right. Oh, your yeah. third question, gentlemen. Which Kurosawa film follows a shoe company executive who becomes a victim of extortion when his chauffeur's son is kidnapped? Arguably my favorite movie of all time. This is High and Low. You are correct. It's High and Low. High and Low. Final answer. Give it to him. Another two points on the board as we continue in your second round here. Your next question. Question number four. Which actor who famously starred in many Kurosawa films played the lead character Sanjuro in the films Yojimbo and Sanjuro? This is Toshiro Mifune. Toshiro Mifune. Final answer. There we go. Continuing on. Two more points. Added on, Mark Ellis, incredible by final exam thus far as we get to what now I believe is your penultimate question. Well done, Brad. Thank you. Which 1949 Kurosawa thriller 
that was finally released in 1963 in the United States is about a police detective whose gun is stolen by a criminal. This is a stray dog, dog, a.k.a. Nora Inu in Japanese. But yeah, stray dog. Final answer. The hits keep coming. Two more points. <laughs> Give it to the Japanese title. <laughs> performance by final exam thus far. They have one question remaining. If they hit it off the top, Brad, it's a perfect round two. Incredible thus far. And your final question in round number two. Which Hollywood actor played a character named Clark in the 1991 Kurosawa film Rhapsody in August? This is Richard, Richard Gere. Gere. Yeah, Richard Gere. Final answer. Perfect. Perfect again. Two more points. Incredible, insane round by final I mean, exam. You know, the, the, they're just such humble fellows when you meet them in person, but this is why the team is called Final Exam. Elon's professorial past showing up in Oyama's <laughs> movie trivia brilliance in the present, arriving just on time for one of the great rounds we've seen in the history of round two, particularly Kurosawa films. So now we are going to welcome back in a lightning time for a daunting round two to climb. So they What's didn't up? leave us anything, huh? Uh, no, there were no steals. Um, there were four name the question movies, two name the actor movies. So you guys have read charts also. You know how to answer questions like that. You should be all set. Hooray! Right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, you don't need my help. You know exactly what's coming. Me, I want to make it clear that, Sam, I, I love you the best because you're currently my manager, but I do, you know, I, I do miss Winston a great deal. Oh, no, I miss him too. Nobody smells as good as Winston. Everybody knows that. It's he's true. the most huggable manager yep. because he is. he's got that sweet musk. And look, I hear you, but uh, you got to go with what's current. So, uh, yeah. so you know, no, nothing against you, Winston. Um, okay. But uh, all right, yeah, we we look. We know exactly what we need to do now. So you guys have to repeat the questions. Uh, go to multiple if you're truly stuck. But otherwise, if you think you know it, take the shot. There it goes, Brad. They could potentially have a lead going into round three, but they have to ace round two just like their opponents did. All right, let's see what they land on. And it is Oscars. Huh. All right, 60 seconds to decide. I, I mean, I'm it's totally a little tougher yet. than, you know, uh, name the movie, name the actor, because uh, this is something that uh, you got to know a whole lot of movies, not just one director. So right. I don't know. It's a pretty wide, wide field. How do you guys feel? I mean, they got Spinner's Choice on their second spin. You think we can do the same? I mean, they got it on Oscars the first time, and then spun again. Let's assume we spin again. We'll get historical epic dramas. I do feel bad about that. Okay, let's do that. Let's spin again. Spin again. All right. Big money, big right, money, big money. Also, I didn't say big money this time. Oh, yeah. Big money, big money, big money. Big money, big money, big money. No whammy. <laughs> big money. I was gonna say. We have to have a press your luck joke in there, and it's oh no! <laughs> of, course oh. It is. of course it is. All right. The well, wheel? this was almost oh. a fair match. Maybe next Give time. <laughs> I was gonna go easy on him, but geez, it'd be so disrespectful. About I thought we were playing well within the rules round of the game. Round two performance. Oh, jeez. Now I, just... I want to throw him something mean. It's all good. I broke my I broke my green screen. That sucks. So I know we okay. we, talk, we talked about it. We were kind of between the two, and we'd sort of leaned towards the towards the one. Are you guys still cool with that? Or well, how do you yeah, feel? I, I I feel good about it. But but they were. Should we consider the other option just based off of the conversation they had, or no? I mean, they they see. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing. I don't know. You you guys you, you decide. I think. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Down. Like they, See, they, like they, they, like they were on the fence about it. So that's why I'm like, do we, right. do we stick with yeah, well, the other option? Apparently, they, it sounded like historical epics and Oscars were the two they were most down on. No, I think he was just predicting the spin, honestly. Um, but oh, uh, one second. Let's let's go ahead. Let's go with our original plan. Yeah, let's go, not, go with yeah, your yeah. Go. We're, we're so, gonna give Oscars. them. We're gonna give them Oscars. Yeah, they're gonna get Oscars. Oscars. Yeah. All right, so now that Swag has made their decision, they're back in the other waiting room. Their manager's still in here with his hands up, of course. And his favorite competitor, not currently on his team, Lightning Loose Shannon Miller, and her teammate, Ethan Big Time Irwin, have a tall task ahead of them. Their opponents got a perfect round two. Now they will try to do the same with the opponent's choice category of Oscars. Heard of them. It's a big time ceremony that sometimes even has a host. So for two points, your first question, unless you need multiple choice. Renee Zellweger won a Best Actress Oscar for playing what real life individual? Julie Garland, final answer. 
Judy Garland is correct for two points. And thank oh, you for the okay. final answer. Your next question, second in this round of six. Who received Best, Ask, Best Actor nominations for the films Midnight Cowboy and Wag the Dog? Dustin Hoffman, final answer. Dustin Hoffman is correct as well, and they're starting to feel it as well, Brad. Here we go with your third question in the world of the Oscars. Who won Best Actor in 2015 for their role as Stephen Hawking? Eddie Redmayne, final answer. Eddie Redmayne is correct, and they have six points out of a possible six thus far in round number two. So we move to your next question. And it is, Kate Blanchett received her first Oscar nomination for her performance in what film? I think it's, it's Elizabeth, yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, final answer. That was a tough one, Brad, and they didn't even blink. That is correct again. They have a perfect eight points thus far. Two questions remain wow. for lightning time. Your penultimate question in the world of the Oscars. Who is the oldest actress to win the Best Actress Oscar at 80 years old? Is it Tandy still? I don't. All right, you want to go multiple? Yeah. Let's go multiple choice on that. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Jessica Tandy, B, Helen Mirren, C, Anna Magnani, or D, Meryl Streep? Yeah, I think Jessica Tandy, A, final answer. Jessica Tandy is correct for a point. No. So they got multiple choice, Brad. I wasn't sure. Tricky question. They still get it, and now they have one question remaining in the world of Oscars. If they hit it right off the bat, then we are tied going into round number three. Here it is. Got to save me from a tie game. Who received Best Actor nominations for the following films? The Last Detail, Prizzy's Honor, and Ironweed. Oh, Jack, Jack Nicholson, final answer. He's the guy that always sits at the front, right? That is correct wow. for two points. And Brad, just like that, lightning time comes storming back after being down a mountain. It is all tied up, 24 apiece, as we head into round three. They did exactly what they needed to do. They answered every single question correctly. They knew they had a little wiggle room there to go multiple choice. Worst case scenario, if they get their last question, we're going in with a tie. I'm sure they would like to have that one point advantage, but nevertheless, we are dead even going into round number three. Round number three, kind of an individual test, but then also a team exercise of movie trivia knowledge. What we first need is a series of numbers from each team. We need three numbers from each of you. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same integers as your opponent, as each numeral corresponds to a unique category of Schmodown mystery. For the two point, three point, and five point question, here's how it works. Brad or myself will tell you the category for the two pointer. At that point, the team has to decide which member will be fielding that question solo. You may not rely on your teammate's strength for the two pointer or the three pointer, which will be answered by the opposite teammate. You may only confer with your teammate for the five point question. No encouragement, no nothing for the two and the three pointer. JTE rules and challenges still remain intact. And so we are going to go to final exam by proxy of introductions. You have the right to give us your three lucky numbers first from one to 20. What feels fortunate? Go ahead, Vaughn. Uh, we'll say two, nine, and 15. Two, nine, and 15 it is. And now we go to lightning time. Uh, 16, 11, and 18. You know, I've been working on this hot 60. Hey, what's going on, Shmo Down? I'm Wednesday Marshall. Glad to be here with y'all today. What's the deal with airline food? Gosh, okay. It's um, taking my bit. Hey, man. Uh, all right, one JTE. Um, I would say just figure it out via category how you want to split this up. And yep. then just handle, handle your business. I think because of how tight this is, don't be afraid to use the JT if you need to. Um, obviously pay attention if you notice that maybe they miss one of those questions. So it's still an opportunity for us to be even on something, maybe save it for the five if we can, yeah. but just use it strategically how you feel fit. Don't be afraid to, to pull the trigger on that one. Um, 
Yeah, man. Uh, you guys are the you guys are the best. You guys are the absolute best. So go handle your business. Let's have some fun. Let's take this all the way to the wire. Let's walk away with this. I'm 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 ready for it, man. I'm ready. Let's do the thing. Did you guys see how disappointed Winston was? You yeah. guys had opponent's choice. They gave you Oscars, and then you got every question. You were this close away from getting the full uh, points value, all, all 12 points. I am so proud of you guys right now. I am so impressed. They are shaking in their boots. We got ourselves a tie ball game here, a brand new ball game. So I think the pressure is on them, not you, and they all know it. So you know exactly where we are. Um, we've got two, two JTEs left, same as you had before. Uh, don't leave any of them out if you need the time, okay? If this thing goes to sudden death, it resets to zero. So uh, you guys are free to divvy up the two and three, however you see fit, and then take all the time you need on any of them. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's win this thing. What do you say? Let's do our best. Love it. All right, always be close. All right, the teams are set after some rousing series of pep talks, and now the questioning for round three will begin. This is the round that will determine the match, unless we go to sun death overtime, which, Brad, kind of a possibility. So we start here with lightning time. Brad Gilmore will be handling the lightning time questioning duties. I will be taking over for final exam. Brad, they selected for their two-point question, category 16. What does Joe Montana's number mean in this scenario? Category 16 is 1970s, 1970s. Uh, we've both been studying it. Yeah. I'll try it. All right, and your question. In the 1970s, for two points, it is going to go to Liz. Is that correct? Yeah. All right, Liz. For two points, Donald Sutherland played Hawkeye Pierce in what 1970 comedy? That would be MASH. MASH is correct for two points. Chalk it up on the board. 26-24. Is correct for two points. And so now we go to final exam. Gentlemen, you selected category two. The only quarterback coming to mind is Tim Couch. So his number corresponds to the world of classics. Paul or Lon, who would like to field that query solo? I'll take that, Lon. Go for it. Yeah, I'll take it. All right. And here is your question. Two points to tie. What 1965 film is about a woman named Maria who becomes a governess for the wealthy Von Trapp family? The Sound of Music. Rodgers and Hammerstein, not bad themselves. That is correct for two points, 26 all. So we go back to lightning time. Brad, they selected number 11 for their three-pointer, which can Incidentally, give them a three-point lead. What category is now Ethan Big Time Irwin looking at? Well, they go from the 1970s to the 1990s. Right. 1990s films is your category. Ethan Big Time Irwin. And as I pull that up, your question. In 1990s for three points, which actor starred in the 1990s films Bullets Over Broadway? City Hall and Con Air. John Cusack. John Cusack is correct for three more points. Lightning time, getting the job done. That is correct. I'm sure John Cusack still loves talking about Con Air to this very day. <laughs> Great Your power. next question is going to be to final exam and it is once again becoming a theme to tie the lead of lightning time for three points this one is going to go to lon harris lon your team selected number nine and that corresponds to the wild frequently wacky world of quentin tarantino okay and the question in the film the hateful eight John Ruth, played by Kurt Russell, executes criminals using what method? I believe he hangs them. We got a tie ball game. Wow. We got some five pointers on the line here, Brad Gilmore. Wow. The hangman. The hang, yes, he's the hangman. <sighs> well, here we go for the 
Five point question for lightning time. Y'all selected the number 18. And the number 18 corresponds to romance films. Okay. Romance cool. films. Good. And your query for five points in romance films is thus. What 1995 film stars Meg Ryan as a woman who flies to confront her ex fiance but gets into a troubling situation with a crook? Is it the one with her and uh, Dennis Quaid? Could be Dennis Quaid. It's a romance film. Is it, it said 95. 95. Four. Three. Could be French Kiss? Two. Repeat the question. Yes, that is correct. All right, All that's right. your second one. You have one remaining. Yeah. Right. What okay. 1995 film stars Meg Ryan as a woman who flies to confront her ex fiance but gets yeah. into a troubling situation with a crook? Uh, French Kiss, final answer. That is correct for five big points for Lightning Time, Mark Ellis. Wow. What Great a pull. Lightning Time. It started to look a little dicey there for them, Brad. They were throwing out names of people not in the movie, but they were just narrowing it down, and they ended up playing spectacular as they usually do. I now knew they a five-point <laughs> lead. And so now there hopefully is not going to be a doubt in final exams mind for their five-point question. If they hit it, they tie the game, and we go to sudden death to find out who the number one contender is. If they miss it, that number one contender is going to be lightning time. Final exam, you selected category 15 for your five point question. And that corresponds to the world of disaster movies. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> disaster films it is. And your question. Ed Harris plays United States Secretary of State Leonard Deckham in this 2017 disaster film. It's Geostorm, Paul. Yeah, I agree. Geostorm, Geostorm final, final answer. Final answer. You can't stump them so far, folks. That is correct, and we go to sudden wow. death for the number one contender. <laughs> of course, when you have... Four players like this, the top two teams in the movie trivia showdown. These are the kind of games that you're going to get. Sudden death overtime is the only thing that makes sense. Just an <laughs> unbelievable display of knowledge. Congrats to all four competitors for making it this far. But now we do find ourselves in sudden death. The rules for this match in this round are a lot like round number one, except the stakes are much, much higher because a meeting with Shazam for the belts is on the line. So Brad and myself is going to ask a question. The question's worth one point. However, like round one, you're not going to be answering the question verbally. First, you will be writing down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing surface you hopefully still have with you. The question's worth a point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing because it is sudden death. Here's how we'll play it. If all four competitors get the question correct, we move on to another question. If all four competitors miss it, we move on to another question. If only two competitors from one from each team get it, then you see where I'm going with this. Whoever has the most points at the end of each question will be declared the winner. If we're tied, we simply move on to the next question. Keep in mind, competitors, Brad Gilmore and myself will not be telling you which category the question is arriving from. We will simply ask the question. You each have one JTE rule and a challenge to use, should you need it, in sudden death. I'm not even, like, I'm upset with Mark <laughs> Ellis right now. He out here leaving, hanging chads out here. I wasn't ready for this. I'm ready for the overtime, because I'm ready for y'all to go in here and to win this. That's That I'm ready for. I just, Mark Ellis playing with my emotions, son. Um, all right, so here's the deal. You guys have kicked so much ass. We can say that word, right? That, that's That's okay? Works for me. I guess I already said it, so it is what it is. You guys have kicked so much ass so far, and I'm proud of you. This is this moment that we've been waiting for. We've been waiting to get to this belt. We've been waiting to show Shazam what's up. So let's just do what we have to do, all right? You two are the baddest. I said it once, I'll say it again. And let's go handle this business. And finally, Sam, ain't nobody scared of you. 
Okay. Uh, long, you know by the way, we, we get one repeat each team. We get one repeat. repeat. I, I, think, I know he said it. Just to remind you, yes. we do have the one. Team repeat. collectively. Again, it is sudden death. So if you need it, use it. But yes, you get the one. But ain't nobody scared of your little ass, Sam. All right. So go ahead and hype them up. And I'll see you at the playground at five. <sighs> Here we are. Here we are. Winston was trying to talk trash to me, and his own player interrupted him. That's how. That's how unbelievable it was. I don't believe you. I mean, I'll see you at five in the playground, but we're having tea. That's what we agreed on yesterday. Huh? Aww. Um, nice. uh, you guys, this is great. You remember round one, right? Yeah. <sighs> you okay. she did That's all we got to do. I'm Just tired. bring back that round one energy. All okay, right? energy, energy. Round one energy. You know round these questions. Energy. You know the answers. You guys I got this. You got the JTE rule if you need it. Don't be shy. Okay, use it, buy yourself the extra time, and just do what you did in round one. Beat them on All points. Right. Okay? Let's do it. All right, we'll see you on the other side. All right, everyone is back. They got another round of, I would say rousing pep talks, Brad, but it almost sounded like either a threat of violence or a nice tea party. Either way, that is in the future. What is present and right now, up close and personal, in the world's face, is sudden death in a number one contender match. So... Whitening Liz, are you ready to go? Let's do it. Juan the delinquent. I'm ready, I guess. Ethan, big time. Continue to always be closing. And prime time, Paul. Reset your clocks. Let's do this. <laughs> it's like daylight savings time. All right, here we go with your first question asked courtesy from the youthful throat of Brad Gilmore. <laughs> your first question. Here. What? 90s adventure epic has the line i will find you no matter how long it takes no matter how far i will find you and so they're scribbling and you just think about how to cash in that jte rule if you need to use it still strategy even in sudden death five four three two one pens down let's go to you first lightning liz uh, my handwriting is terrible. I apologize, but the last of the Mohicans. I can make that out just fine. Lon Harris. The last of the Mohicans. Ethan Irwin. Also the last of the Mohicans. And primetime. The last of the Mohicans. He will find you, and they all found the answer for that one. So we move on to your next question. Question two in sudden death. Everybody has time to erase what they wrote. And here we are. Julia Roberts plays Alice Sutton, a lawyer at the Justice Department, in what 1997 film? Five. Repeat the question. Four. All right, that's their first and only JTE rule. Julia Roberts plays Alice Sutton a lawyer at the Justice Department in this 1997 film. All right, so final exam out of JTE rules. Lightning time still retains usage of theirs. Five. Sorry, Lon, if I missed this. Four, three, two, Damn. one. Pens down, and we are going to Lon the Delinquent. Is it the Pelican Brief? And Ethan Irwin? Conspiracy. And Paul Oyama. The conspiracy theory. And Lightning Liz. Just, the Pelican Brief. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, we, we were all ready to say, and your winner, but the they answer is the conspiracy the theory. Oh, wow. Sorry, <laughs> so, I missed it. Okay. But two folks picking the Pelican Brief, and so right. we still remain in this matchup. Wow, Brad that Gilmore. Conspiracy wow. Movie. All right, so, <laughs> so many exciting tense moments on. already. <laughs> And we're only two questions deep. So Brad Gilmore asking the third question. Reminder to competitors, again, we are not saying the category, just asking the question. Brad, at your ready, sir. Your next question. Which former SNL actress provides the voice of a news reporter named Roxanne Ritchie in the film Megamind? Sudden death just gets more and more yes. tense with every question. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down, one. Uh, let's go to Ethan Irwin first. I said 
Tina Fey. And Paul Oyama. Tina Fey. And Lightning Liz. Kristen Wiig. And Juan Harris. I had Maya Rudolph. <laughs> All right, this is just uh, becoming Juan and Liz hearing one set of questions and Paul and Ethan hearing a different one. The answer is Tina Fey. And... You guys want to team up? Do you two want to team up? <laughs> <laughs> it is still tied as we go into the fourth question. Oh, Brad, it's, it's like we have this, it's like a horror movie because you have these intense moments of terror and then some levity and then right back into another tense moment. Your fourth question in sudden death, Overtime. Here we go. Tom Cruise and Elizabeth Shue star together in what film? Question four in sudden death. Probably not the last. Five, four. We'll find out. Three, two, one. Pens down. So we go to Paul Primetime. Cocktail. And Lightning Liz. All the right moves. And Juan Harris. <laughs> oh, I think we did it again. I have all the right moves. And Ethan. Cocktail. They did it again. Oh, go, my God. <laughs> it, 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 is, this, is this a bit? Oh, my God. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't even be doing this as a bit. It's because you two are in love and Paul and I are also in love. Yeah, yeah. that explains it. It's the correct answer is cocktail. And yeah, so now, Brad, we, we go back to another question. And I, I just know for myself, I can't imagine how the managers, how the audience is feeling right now. <laughs> Jen Sturge, I'm sure, has things to do later. So this is just a, a topsy-turvy sudden death, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Wow. Okay. Well, let's, let's continue on with your next question in sudden death. And that question is, Kevin Costner plays the general manager of what NFL team in draft day? Just need the name of the team, not the city. Oh. Well. All right. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we are all the way back to Lightning with Shannon Miller. Cleveland Browns. Browns is correct. Lon Harris. I didn't know. I said the Dallas Cowboys. And Ethan Irwin. Here we go, ladies. Cleveland Browns. Oh, boy. You got it. And your winner, Lightning Time. Oh. The answer was the Cleveland franchise known as the oh. Browns. And I just, much like an epic football wow. game, Brad, we are out of breath. We are out of sweat, out of ability to use our extremities what a match that was look at the usual suspects they are exhausting it. sorry I'm uh, <laughs> wow you, well, know you just heard the what. exclamation yeah lightning time we'll let you gather your thoughts and get your bearings and clean up your body now. brad gilmore i mean that is why you watch a show like the movie trivia schmodown it's about the movie trivia it's about the entertainment it's about the sport but the competition that we saw on display today was you say number one contender i say championship level and yes. you know somewhere shazam is watching and studying and saying we better prepare for that 41 to 40. i mean this game was insane from the get-go and i knew as soon as sudden death happens you never know what's going to happen there it was an interesting volley back and forth between lon harris and liz shannon miller there for a moment liz shannon miller cashes in on the cleveland browns a sentence i never thought that i would say in my adult life and we have a winner lightning time gets the w that's right baker mayfield strikes again and so you have the browns being the correct answer there and for lightning time it is a date with destiny in the form of William the Beast Bibiani and Brendan the Kid Meyer. They are going to be taking on Shazam for those team belts. And what a way to do it. They're going to get a little bit of rest before they have to play Shazam, but not quite yet. Because first, they get to have a celebratory interview with the great Jen Sturger alongside their manager, Sam Levine of The Usual Suspects. Jen, I, I can't imagine the elation of just being done with this match. I feel like this has just been a long time coming for the two of you, and I've loved watching your chem oh wow, <laughs> and I love watching your chemistry play out this entire season. Uh, how does this feel to get this win? 
Well, I, I want to be very clear about something. I've never done sudden death before. That was my first time. So that's why, like, if I seem like weird or edgy, it was because I never done that before. Like my 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 whole like game mentality is like, you know, get through round one, get that stuff done, and then the whiteboard is gone. The whiteboard, my enemy is away, and I don't have to think about it anymore. And then the white the whiteboard comes back. Who allowed this? But that being said, uh, once I once I got over that, and then of course got the correct set of questions that Mom got, uh, you know, we were you know doing fine. Absolutely, Ethan. No, it's look. It's a, this is. This is my third match this week. I played Oyama in IG on Friday. I played Dan on Sunday. I, we do, we're doing this. Um, so for this to be the outcome is phenomenal. I, I, this was this was great. It was great. Absolutely. Great. <laughs> it's you're so great. weird because you guys aren't even talking in the right direction. <laughs> well, you're going to flip it, I assume. <laughs> oh, not God. Flip it? oh, Well, who knows? We'll fix it in post. Okay. You're doing great. So, uh, Sam, this, <laughs> this this was a crazy match. Obviously, uh, going through what was going through your head as their manager? I mean, look, I I have to say this: the, the two of them are the absolute perfect example of what a truly great team is because they absolutely pick each other up when they had to. I have no doubt in my mind. That, you know, Liz's instincts and Oscar's were great across the board. I mean, and and Ethan right there going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oyama in sudden death, making sure that they never got out of it. That is what a great team does. They pick each other up when they need to keep going, and they did it from start to finish. Uh, and uh, I am so proud of them. They are such a cohesive unit. They study well together. They hang out in a garden together. Um, and I'm so proud of these two right now. This was such an <laughs> epic battle. And I am, I, I have to say, I am so uh, uh, humbled by how well Final Exam did against them today. They, they were no slouches. I mean, oh they ran God. their second round. Uh, and, and look, we had an uphill battle to climb. They get spinners, we get opponents. I, I'm going to have to check Frank Janish and see how often in a number one contender match, a team has come up victorious or a player has come up victorious with that bad luck against them. Were you were you worried about that going sideways right there? Of course I was. Who wouldn't be? You know, they get their strength and we get what at least they presume is going to be our biggest weakness. So, yes, of course I was worried and I'm so proud of how well these guys played and uh, they represent everything that I think the usual suspects are, which is a never say die attitude. Doesn't matter how bad the luck is on your end. You fight till the bitter end, and they did, and they are the winners. Absolutely, today. absolutely. Well, you guys don't get to celebrate too long, obviously, because you've got a, a big match coming up now. Uh, Liz, arguably the biggest one in your career. Am I wrong? I mean, I, it's not my. I mean, oh, I guess I actually am playing for a belt this time. And yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I not, I you. Have, yeah, you beat Bibiati though. I have beat Bibiati. I mean, that was that was down to the five. Anyone knows that, like, you get down to the five, and anyone. But I will say that I am looking forward to it for sure. And yeah, it, it I I really appreciated all the people who have been like, oh, Liz should have a belt, Liz should have a belt. And I'm like, that's really hard, you guys. Uh, you know, getting a belt is you know, apparently a very complicated process, a very long, complicated process. But I'm very excited about where we're at. Um, and yeah, one right there. If, it, if it's a very deep, I can help you get something belt. That's what that's what that's what that's what that's what that's that thing, honestly probably more exciting to me than actually holding the belt is getting this guy two belts. Okay. Ethan, if, if you rotate that just a little bit, I might actually get some light on Liz's face. So. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, <laughs> Perfect bounce. Perfect hey, this isn't your first time on a set, is it, Ethan? You know what? Yeah, but thank, thank, yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not this <laughs> So I guess the um, question is, how do you prepare for someone like Shazam? All right, you just, you know... I'm going to pay him $10,000 just to throw the whole thing. There you That's go. Uh, let's not start rumors <laughs> like that, guys. <laughs> um, I will say, uh, I, 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 I want to make sure really quickly to say that Final Fantasy was incredible. And they were so, they were so on this day. And it was a pleasure to play that. And it was so easily gone the other way. Yeah, preparing for Shazam, it's just going to be all learning our movies. They're 
ruthless in, when it comes to the specific trivia, and they just know they're, they know their Oscars top to bottom and all their all that jazz. So I'm yeah, it's just gonna be it's gonna be study like that and pull up with the draw and uh, occasionally just calling on Ethan for press the post production support. I gotta say though, guys, if you keep up this fun, playful energy, I mean, that's the scariest kind of energy to see your opponent have because it just means they're going into that match loose and ready to play and ready to have some fun. And I think that that's the best way you can approach these type of matches coming up. So, I mean, the one thing I know for sure is that we're gonna have a really fun time playing Azure Man. They're gonna be Well, congratulations today, guys. Uh, always a pleasure to see you both. Uh, yes. Go enjoy this. Clearly in yep. your yeah. magical garden you're in right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we obviously echo Sam Levine's sentiments Absolutely. towards Jen Sturger. Great seeing her back on her feet and getting back to 100%. And when you talk about fun and playful, sure, Brad, that's the kind of energy the Lightning Time had today. That's also how Shazam has made their mark. And so Lightning Time's going to get their kisses and roses, win or lose, when they go up in that championship bout. But let's take a moment here to talk about how well final exam Played. You always know that you're getting an A-plus effort with them, but my goodness, were they awesome today. They smoked through a category, Akira Kurosawa in round number two. Round number three, they did everything they could, and then it just didn't quite break their way in sudden death. But I mean, 41 to 40, you know that there were no slouches of any of the four competitors if that's the final score. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, that is one of the most well uh, uh, pl uh Cohesive is the word I'm looking for. They're so cohesive, that team. They play so well together in, in talking about final exam. They know one another's rhythms. They trust one another. Every every hallmark of what a great team is in the movie Trivia Schmodown, those two men possess that. And uh, I, I think that obviously they went out here and they played the very best game that they could. One point shy of, of sending it to the next you know question for sudden death, but I don't think they have anything to hold their heads about. Sure, do they want a shot at the titles? Everybody does, but um, I think that they uh, played an incredible game. They certainly did, and now I'm sure the mood is quite as good as it was with lightning time, but knowing Winston Marshall, he knows how to put a smile on faces. He, of course, of Team Swag, and now it is going to be those three alongside Jen Sturger. Back to you, Jen. That was a really tough loss today, guys. Uh, I can only imagine how you're feeling um, I mean, look, I would just highlight the difference between all the other factions and swag. Another faction wins a close match. It's like, oh, so unfair. Oh, the wheel. We got to We spun a slice that's on the wheel. How could that happen? I, I'm going to look up the stats and then we drop a close match. Hey, it's all smiles. It's totally fine. It's, it's you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll be, we'll be back it, another day. Paul, it, I noticed it, though, that this is really hitting you hard. Really yeah, hard. I, I will say, I think a lot of times when teams lose matches, it just becomes about like what mistakes you made and what you did wrong and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, the only mistake I care about is if anyone makes a mistake of underestimating this team moving forward um, in the team tournament. Um, I am, I'm rearing to go still. Um, I would play another match right now if it came to it. Um, okay. I need a break. I need it's got to be tough to lose a match in sudden death when it's just like you were clawing your way that into like you guys were neck and neck the entire time, just standing there in the middle of the ring, like you know, hitting each other in the face. Like it's all losses hurt. count the same, whether it's by one where you lose by a hundred. A loss is a loss. Obviously, it's tough. You know, I think we played pretty well. Um, it you know it obviously just sucks, um, but we, you know we'll we'll survive and we'll be back. Um, I just got to say that like it's it is like it's still like such a pleasure to be in the, in the foxhole with these two um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything and I think that like um, that's what motivates me to want to wanna win again because um, it's I easy to get like I just wish they could catch a break man I just wish this run it's... is horrible luck man why can't those that's, two catch a break that's that's so all right that's I, yeah. I want to I want to address a couple things I do appreciate that you're still willing to be in the foxhole with this man and I appreciate that but I want you to understand something even I do get that a loss is a loss but I think what's so funny is that at the end of the day the tail of the tape is never accurate just to what this is you know what i'm saying if you go and look at what swag has done this season i get where we are in the standings look at how everybody on this faction has played look at this score right now this is not a normal team score most teams cannot do this so this is one of those situations where we have been playing our heart out this season and it hasn't quite turned into pay dirt but that's okay because the truth is this entire faction is lethal. 
and it's been proven time and time again. So we still have the rest of the singles tournament. You know, final exam by by not getting this, I'm putting them in the teams tournament. Uh, you know, we have so much to look forward to. I think the only thing about this that that hits me in my soul, honestly, I don't know how I could be this sad and this happy at the same time. I genuinely don't. I said this you're once you're genuinely before. proud of these men. You're genuinely proud of them. That's of hard. them too. Of them too. Get, don't, 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 like, I, I mean that. They know how I feel about them. But I, I say this specifically because I made this statement about Liz. Liz is a once in a generation type player. She shows it every time she gets out there. And I can't speak, even though she's moved on to Sam, I can't speak more highly of how proud I am of her. The Cleveland Browns, you knew that? You knew the Cleveland Browns, Liz? I guess we talked a lot more than a thought, and maybe I should have cut my tongue out. Maybe that's what should have happened. That's on me. But girl, go get your belt, shut Shazam down, and then come on back to Swag and bring the belt with you. Either could come to, I don't even care. Everybody, Sam, everybody leaving your ass, okay? I'm taking them all. I'm stealing them all. It's gonna be the unusual suspects taking all your people, God damn it. Anyways, uh, so this means you you guys will be going into the tournament, obviously. Um, yeah, I guess. I think that 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 anyone should be scared to play you guys at this point <laughs> because I feel like this is the most determined polyama I've ever seen. They'll know when we play. They'll know when the bill comes due. They'll know. <laughs> wow. I'm scared. I'm not <laughs> seeing. <laughs> Get you better get your shields up. You better have the antidote. You better make sure you got on a bulletproof vest because Paulo Yama ain't playing. And Lord Harris, Lord Harris, oh Lord, Lord Harris, let's go! Wow, let's go! Tough loss today, gentlemen. Um, Paul, thanks hang as in always, there. Jen. Thank we'll you. Back. Great to we'll see you guys. Uh, it, Brad, somebody may want to get word to Winston that the match just ended, isn't just starting, because he seems pumped up and ready to go. We know how focused Paul Oyama is, because Primetime always has that steely look in his face. I have not seen a more focused delinquent up to this point, yeah. too, so I, I agree with what Jen had told the gentleman. I don't think any team wants to see final exam going into the tournament. No, no, that is not, a, that is not somebody that you want to see in your first round, second round, or, you know, the finals, for perhaps. We'll, we'll see what the final exam does. I have all the faith in the world of them after we game that we saw them play today. Um, but, you know, I, it's always tough. It's always tough to be right there. It's always tough to be right there and not get the W. But, again, they played so damn well together that I, I can't see them uh, not going incredibly far in the tournament now with, with yes. motivation behind them. That's the key right there is because we know how motivated lightning time is going to be. They just feel like two peas in a pod right now. The chemistry is just off the charts. And I think with final exam, as long as they can hunker down, get their studying right, which they've done all season and really last year as well, long, you're going to see a formidable bid to win that tournament. And so what a match we saw here today. And it's just a little taste of what you get in the team's division here in the movie trivia schmodown. Brad, your final thoughts on the match we just witnessed all timer those are the only words i had that was an all-time match and i just am glad that i had the privilege to sit here next to you and call that one it, it, at moments i got lost in the match i got lost watching these four go at it incredible stuff well it took let's see eight questions in round one six in round two three each in round three and then five oh but we finally got there cleveland browns fans we finally got your team some run in the movie trivia schmodown speaking of the schmodown Cleveland is the city maybe we'll get to next year. In the meantime, we are headed to New York, and we also have our downtown L.A. Schmodown Spectacular December 4th. For tickets for live events and all the information inside and outside the movie trivia Schmodown, just go to the schmodownlive.com. For all the great competitors, managers, Jen Sturger, our behind-the-scenes team, our writing staff, and Brad the Boat Gilmore, I'm Mark Ellis, saying that's roll damn tide. I... I guess you call me Deacon Blues. This has been the Movie Trivia Schmodown, and we'll see you all soon.